Good morning Year 7. Today's lesson is on knives, carrying on from the previous lesson on small scale equipment. You will find that I have uploaded a worksheet entitled Year 7 Lesson 8 Knives and if you if you can't print that off you can just do it straight onto paper that's absolutely fine please just make sure you bring that with you when you are next back in school and we can stick it into your books the first question it asks you to um, name which piece of equipment you think is the most dangerous and explain why there's not technically a wrong answer um, but just quickly pause this video and have a go at answering which piece of equipment you believe is the most dangerous in the kitchen and give a short explanation as to why so pause now if you are going to start doing that task through today's lesson and carrying on from last week's lesson moving through till next week as well we've been looking at that small scale equipment and identifying those pieces of equipment and matching them with the correct tasks the practical aspect we will be doing in a couple of weeks time within school um, to have a look at using a range of techniques and um, safely executing those knife skills. Before we move on, number two on your worksheet is to name two of the most important pieces of equipment in the kitchen and explain why. I would say sometimes actually we might think there's kind of five or six of the most important uh, piece of equipment in the food room or in the kitchen um, think logically about what today's lesson is on um, and just quickly fill those two spaces in with a reason for them if you pause this video now and then you can continue once you have completed question number two so question number two I would say the two most important pieces of equipment certainly in a kitchen or a food room, not necessarily um, in a restaurant, would be a chopping knife, chopping knife, a sharp knife, sorry, and a chopping board. With both of those pieces of equipment, you can reasonably assume a lot of um, different food products can be made. It's not an exclusive list. There are definitely other pieces of equipment which are also very, very important, but they are key to you successfully producing a range of of dishes. We're going to have a look at um, question three now and a couple of different types of specific knives. There are hundreds of types of knives. These are the only two that you really need to know about at this point and that you are likely to come across whether that be at home or at school. The first one is a chef's knife. It's also sometimes known as a cook's knife or a French knife and its purpose is for slicing, chopping, dicing and mincing. You will see there is quite a big arch in which to hold your hand underneath the knife. That is what sets it apart from some other large knives and it allows that rocking motion, which is also because of the curve of the knife. And so you can cut things up quicker, more effectively and slightly safer. The blade generally varies between 6 and kind of 10 inches, which is a pretty sizeable blade, uh, but the whole knife is actually slightly larger than that as well. You can get slightly smaller ones, um, but you will find that it gets to a certain point and you lose that space for your hand to actually hold onto the knife nice and safely. If you were a chef, for example, you would probably have your own set of knives and you will have knives that you use for just for one piece of food, just for one technique that you are using, um, even if those individual knives are technically the same knife, as in a chef's knife, you would use them potentially for slightly different purposes. The second knife is just quick gif showing you how you can do some chopping the second knife is a paring knife if you remember back to last lesson when we labeled all the different pieces of small scale equipment this is also sometimes referred to as a vegetable knife it is the only other knife along with a chef's knife that you really do need in school this is the knife we would primarily use when we do get to do some practical in school mainly because of a safety point of view it's small, it's rigid, that means that the blade doesn't really flex too much 
and it's not particularly um, long and the blade is normally a similar length to the handle. It can be used for peeling, although that's not something we will be doing with it in school because of the safety aspect. Um, you can use it for cutting small garnishes, carving melons, um, just general small scale chopping skills. You can be reasonably precise with it, which is why it's got down that you can use it, uh, use it for carving. Um, using something to pair, hence the name paring knife, is to trim off a thin outer layer, or in other words, to peel something. Okay. So if you need to pause the video now so you can complete question number three, please do so. Okay, using the knife, a bit like if you or I were to use a pen or a pencil, everyone has a certain way that they use a pen or a pencil, even though there is a standard way that is taught kind of in schools when you're in primary school. Generally speaking, certainly most chefs will hold the base of the knife, as you can see in the picture on the screen, between their first finger and their thumb. It just gives a little bit more control and therefore precision in what you are um, chopping up. I certainly find that I get kind of cramped in my hands if I do that because I don't do an awful lot of chopping. Um, and so I literally hold it around the handle, which you would probably find is the easiest, um, certainly if you were just using it at home or in school. There are two um, kind of cutting techniques which we're going to cover today's, in today's lesson and there's some videos to accompany them. These are the main two methods of chopping that we use in school, primarily because of their safety merits. If you see chefs kind of chopping on TV shows, for example, they might not always use these two techniques, but they are what we recommend that you do use at home and they're certainly what we make um, the most of using in school. So in a moment I will play the video. You can also access both this PowerPoint and the video just as a link on the Teams um, assignment. Okay, so bear with me one moment whilst we load it up because it can be a little bit slow sometimes. Essentially, what you're going to be doing is creating a bridge with your hand for the knife to go through the middle of all right and that is the bridge technique it is a more basic technique um, than the second one we will go through but it is very effective in chopping the bridge hold first twist the stalk from the tomato Apologies, year seven, it should be coming up now. The bridge hold. First, twist the stalk from the tomato. Place the tomato onto the chopping board. Make a bridge over the tomato with your hand. The fingers should be on one side and your thumb should be on the other. Pick up the knife with your other hand and check that the blade is facing downwards. Then, guide the knife under the bridge and over the tomato. Cut into the tomato by pressing the knife down and pulling it out of the bridge. You might like to think of the knife as a train which goes under the bridge. Now, take one half at a time and place it flat side down. So you should have been able to see there from both of the both the video and the diagram you can see on the PowerPoint here that there's quite a nice large amount of space in between your thumb and your fingers for the knife to go, therefore keeping your fingers nice and safe. It's not particularly precise, you're only going to get reasonably large chunks when you're using this knife technique. Um, but it's definitely, it's that basic one that once you can use the bridge hold, you can then progress through to the next one we're going to talk about. If you need to, if you pause the video now, you're going to, on your worksheet question number four, 
you are going to draw and explain the bridge technique in the spaces provided or on the sheet of paper if you're just doing it on paper. Also on the PowerPoint attached, it goes through step by step, essentially narrating what was in the video for you. The second grip is called the claw grip. It gives a little bit more precision in terms of what you can do with your knife. So think kind of slicing things down into much finer um, chunks. And But with that comes a slightly added element of risk. You can see on the picture on the PowerPoint that those fingertips are curved slightly round and pointing under. What that means is when you are chopping kind of against them, you can't accidentally chop your fingertips off, which is obviously something we want to try and avoid. I'm going to quickly play the start of the video again. If you want to watch any of these videos in more depth, like I say, they are also found on the PowerPoint, which has been attached for you. Bear with me whilst we get this loaded up. So the claw grip is slightly more advanced. You might find it slightly more difficult than the bridge grip. But like I said, it will be a little bit more precise in what you can achieve. The claw grip. Place the celery onto the chopping board. Make a claw with your hand by partly curling your fingers together. Decide how thick you want the slices before you begin. Then, pick up the knife with your other hand and check that the blade is facing downwards. Tilt the knife and slice through the celery using your fingers as a guide. Slide your fingers back, keeping your grip on the celery and continue slicing carefully. So, as you can see from that video, you can get slightly more precise cuts. Um, you even though you're using the same knife. As with the uh, bridge technique, I want you to have a go at just drawing the claw grip and a brief explanation underneath for uh, to demonstrate how the claw grip works. Similarly as previous, if you need to pause the video to do that, please do so. Um, and the additional information is also found on the PowerPoint that has been attached if and when you need it. To peel and chop an onion, um, just as a little kind of added extra towards the end, if you cut the top of the onion off, which is kind of the pointy part at the top, you want to keep the fluffy part at the bottom, that is the root, and that's what's going to hold it together. You then peel the onion, you're going to chop it from top to bottom. By chopping it top to bottom, it means the root has been left on on both sides. That can then be laid flat. We always lay our food flat as soon as we can do because it's minimising that risk of injury because it's not going to accidentally slip away. You're going to chop into the onion in one direction, turn it around, chop it in the other direction, you will end up with a reasonably fine dice of onion, but it's not taking you anywhere near than slicing one slice off, then chopping that one into dice, slicing another one off, and chopping that one into dice as well. Over the next couple of weeks, you'll be doing a practical uh, knife skills lesson in your food lesson in school um, ingredients and equipment will be provided for that so you don't need to bring anything with you but it gives us the opportunity to do a little bit of practical and to make sure that we've got those knife skills nice and securely um, kind of secured so that we know what we can do as we progress through the rest of year seven okay so if you need anything else um, please just pop me a message on teams or you can send me an email as well and I'll respond as soon as I am able to. Okay, thank you, Year 7. Bye-bye.